Hey, sus listeners, I do more than just talking on the mic. I actually sing into the mic. If you want to hear my brand new song called Girl Next Door, it's available everywhere. You know what? Let me play a little bit of that for you. I'm falling for the girl next door. Been through hell and back. That's why she don't get attached. I'm falling for the girl next door. I'm falling for the girl next door. Sounds fire, right? Right after this podcast, go stream Girl Next Door. Available everywhere on every single platform where they stream music. Enjoy. One week until Christmas, boy, am I excited. I haven't even asked anyone what they want, so uh, no one should be excited, really. Either way, we have a very exciting podcast today. We have on the woman who pushed us out of her vagine herself. Let's welcome to the Sus Podcast, my mom. Wow. Listen, That's a nice intro. Thank you. Before we get started, Mom, I just want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Thank you for pushing me out of your vagine. Because if you didn't, I wouldn't be here right now making this podcast. Well, you're welcome. You came up pretty quick. Was that how? Yeah. Was, how was how was the birth process? I didn't know this, right? Uh, yeah. Tell us. Did you poop on either of our heads? Yeah, of course. Everybody poops when you're pushing a little bit, but it's it's normal, you know. Who was the hardest to, to give birth to, me or Jake? You know, all three of you guys kind of came out really quickly, to be honest with you. Um, I would say Jake, though, just because I didn't know what to expect. Yeah, see, this is the thing that everyone probably doesn't know, that when, when Jake actually was born, they didn't know whether he was a boy or a girl. Because we had these little Bambi blankets growing up. Mine, that's what I said, Bambi blankets. Mine was blue and Jake's was yellow because my mom was unsure. Because his thing was so small on the ultrasound. (laughs) No, that's not true. We wanted to be surprised with Jake. And to be honest with you, I wanted a boy first. I was thinking about the order of, you know, sexes of my kids. And I definitely wanted a boy first. And we got the boy. But we didn't want to find out. We wanted to be surprised for the first. (laughs) (laughs) How are you going to try to use my own joke right back on me? That's so foolish. Either way, look at this cool hat. One of one. Just wanted to point it out. Shout out Liz for the hat. Very cool hat. I wanted to get down, okay? People might not recognize where we're at right now. Let's kind of let the people know first on the podcast because we haven't really let anyone know anywhere else. But I finally got a house. Congratulations. We're in the house right now. It's really all filled with boxes still. Everything is kind of disconnected and not working because we have workers here that are working on things all day long. DIY home renovations. It's going to be so much fun. It's starting on the YouTube channel. If you're not subscribed already, go check it out. YouTube.com slash Brandon Taylor. Yeah, we're doing crazy stuff. We put two doors in this house. We cut windows <laughs> and made them into doors. Like, it's crazy what you we're doing here. You broke down walls to make a door. Yes, we smashed, uh, we've smashed things with sledgehammers. It's been crazy. It's going to be an awesome series that we're starting. My mom's uh, the head contractor here. That's so right. she's making everything uh, happen. And big shout out to Pedro. He's our... He's our main guy. Who's, he's our sub. He's, is that what they call him? <laughs> I guess. He, I'm, I'm general contractor. He's my little subcontractor. Listen, we couldn't be doing anything if it wasn't for Pedro. So, uh, it so yes. Oh, my God, guys. You we, couldn't do anything without me, listen, period. I wouldn't have a credit card if it wasn't for this woman's vagine. That's right. Right? She pushed me out of it, so I have a credit card. But, no, for real, buying a house is an awesome thing, but it's a very expensive thing, all right? I've never seen my bank account just drop faster ever in my life. So. Yeah, and you get into one little project, you think you're going to just do one little thing, and it turns into yeah. a million little other things. When we started this, I was only going to do hardwood floors. That was like kind of it. Then it turned into turning windows into doors and you know spending thousands and thousands of dollars at Home Depot every single day. Yeah, It's been getting crazy, but it's all going to be worth it when this is all done. We're going to have the awesome content house where we can make the most insane things. And it's going to be dope. But yeah, enough about the house. I want to get into my mother's story, okay? Mom, like, tell us, like, what were we like as kids? Like, what was it like being a single mom, you know, raising three kids? It was tough, let me tell you. Guys, it was tough. Um, you know, I went through a divorce, a really, really bad, ugly divorce when you guys were very little. Jess was two, you were four, Jake was six, going on seven. Everybody was going on to the next stage. And, well, obviously, right? And um, it was tough. I mean, single mom and I had no help. And I had three kids that you guys were 
a terror. Let we me tell bad you. Kids, because I remember thinking back, like we were some messed up kids. You were I mean, you were messed up. And that's the thing is my mom has always thrown this card on us like, oh, your, your friends are probably don't treat their families like this. Like, but I think most normal functional families in America and probably outside of America argue and fight. Like she tries to make it think like it's just no, us. no, no. P- OK, I have a brother and a sister. We you are even talk. <laughs> yes, we do. But, you know, we're like four or five years apart. You guys are two years apart. And I don't remember growing up fighting and arguing. Yes, we had our little, little, little arguments and stuff, but not like you guys. It was so bad that I was always asking my friends, do your kids fight? Do your kids fight? Do your ki-? I wanted to find out if my house was normal or what was the issue here. I, I mean, I guess that comes down to like if people watching this on the Sus channel, uh, let us know. Do you guys fight with your siblings? Because I think... I truly feel like when seeing my other friends, like I do have a couple friends who are like really good seeds, if you will, and literally are like the best kids where I'm like, damn, like they inspire me. I want to be like that. Yeah, but then I'm like, this isn't normal, you know? I feel like, I don't know. Like, I feel like, you know, it it really did shape us the way we are now. I mean, I just kind of chalk it up to like, we were just so busy running around. I was, I had... I was working, you guys were in your YMCA after school program late, and it was just like constantly run, 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 drop you off at grandma's so I can go to the market, come back home, cook. It was just so much, and I think you guys just wanted like my attention too, and that's possibly why you guys were arguing or doing something destructive just to get my attention, you know what I mean? What would we do to get your attention? (laughs) Or who, who, who and who wanted your attention most out of all your kids? I would probably say Jessica. She was such a pain. <laughs> we have we have this dog Daisy. She's very old, sixteen years old. We love her to death. Um, she, my mom. Okay, so I one day came home and I didn't even like know we were getting a dog. I knocked on the door coming home from you know sperm donor's house and uh, I saw I saw this dog running up. I'm like, what the heck is this? You know, whose dog is this? Anyways, we had this dog. My sister wanted this dog, my brother wanted this dog, and we'd have to like bring the dog in every night because there's coyotes outside and they would eat her if we didn't. And my mom would never make my sister take the dog in. And it would piss me off because like I didn't sign up for this. Well, because she was the little one. Like you guys were the two years younger. Yeah. Yeah, but that's kind of like the the guys should do that and you know. I mean, but she could bring a dog in. You know? <laughs> Anyways, what was what was the hardest part though? What was the hardest part? The hardest part was just juggling, juggling. I wanted you guys to have the most normal childhood upbringing as possible, but with one parent, so it was really really difficult because I needed to work full time and sometimes, you know, time and a half and it, it was difficult and I still wanted to make sure that you guys had all the activities, all the, you know, soccer, acting classes, guitar, uh, track, you know, do it all. So that's what I'm talking about. We were running Mm. because I was so busy, but I was still doing all those things for you guys too and allowing all that to happen. So it was just crazy. It's almost like if I think about it now, it was, it's, it's a big blur in my, it's like, do you ever think like, dang, how did I do all that? Yeah. Yeah. And I've had so many people through the years, people that, have heard my story um, and people that like family that have witnessed it, they're like, you're so strong. How did you do it? And I'm like, I have no idea how I did it. I just like every day. But what sucks about it is that now I look back and I'm like, I feel like those 10 years or whatever, however long that was, that period went by so quick. And I wish we could have slowed down a minute so I could have enjoyed it more. That's, that's kind of like with anything though, you know, you kind of think like, Time does fly. If you you know, if you're not in the moment, it, it will fly. And that's one thing us humans need to do is be more in the moment. But absolutely. You know, yeah, I mean, think about it now. We're in COVID. Like we've almost been in COVID for a year. But think about like our food videos, our one star. We kind of like read about doing it, but now we want to be able to do everything. I miss just like being yeah. out there and just like being risky. But even in COVID, like. Don't you feel like our time's still going by so fast? Yeah. At first, in the beginning, I felt like it was long. And then things kind of started normalizing. And, like, you kind of had to just do your normal day, even though it's COVID. And then after that happened is when it started just skyrocketing and going so fast again. Well, because everything stopped. Your daily routine of going to the gym. Yeah. Going to Starbucks and that kind of thing. Everything shut down. Yeah. 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 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is crazy. What was your What was your favorite favorite memory from when we were young and from your even your younger days before us? My favorite. What's your favorite memory, memory in life? Oh my and gosh. not just giving birth to us, like something different. Ah, got you. You put me on the spot. That's what um, I do. I'm the spot putter. I mean, my I have, my three favorite memories is like giving birth th- to the three uh, of you. No, no, no. no we don't want to hear that. But but you have you have to, <laughs> you have to listen. So you guys were never none of you guys were a mistake. You know, you all three were absolutely planned. I'm serious. And so that those were like the biggest, best memories, best joy of my life. Um, besides that, I mean, you know, watching your accomplishments, all three of you guys, the different stages have been great memories for me. Yeah. Yeah, like I would have wanted gone out too. Uh, but yeah, so basically, my mom, my mom, how old were you when you had your first kid? Oh, I'm not going to say that. Oh, because then the Then we went, figure it out. The... Then the math starts Dang. working. So you can't remember your first memory, but you can uh, remember yeah. what not to answer, huh? <laughs> All right, well, look, when my mom, my mom was a youngin', you know, out back in the day, and she used to like to party just like every single one of us, right, at one point or another. And we used to have to go to our grandma's house. And, like, we would get in some trouble over there, too, because we were crazy kids. Let's talk about – remember that one time? Listen, guys, one time Jake ate fossilized sh- yeah, And for the, when that was bleeped on the podcast, I said fossilized poop. He ate fossilized poop. So basically what happened was we were doing – my mom went to Vegas. My mom decided to go to Vegas for the weekend. I was, like, partying with the girls. <laughs> mom, watch the kids. <laughs> so we were over at our grandma's house, and my brother and I had our little bikes. Like, they weren't even, like – Normal size bikes. They're kid little, bikes, little, little, little tiny BMX bikes, bikes. bikes and backyard, dirt, straight dirt. So we were making uh, little jumps for us, yeah, and we were <laughs> digging it up. So we digged up this old fossilized crap, right? Like we found like old crap, and Jake decided it would be a good idea to pick it up and put it on my bike. And when something like that happens, <laughs> it infuriates me. Still to this day, like I get a short fuse. I grabbed that crap right off of my bike <laughs> and I start he starts running. They're like playing with cat no, crap we don't know or if it dog was cat. crap. Who knows? I'm thinking it's Tyrannosaurus Rex. Well, crap. it's like plain, you guys. I'm Jake runs and I grab him. I have this crap in my hand. I'm chasing him and he runs inside thinking that that's gonna stop me. That did not stop me. I chucked this crap. I slammed the door. But it went in before the door was slammed. And my grandma goes up to Jake, grabs the crap, and shoves it down his throat. I don't know if it was that no, it was that dramatic. dramatic. It was that. It was that. And then I got uh, yeah. And then I got um kicked out of the house like not kicked out but like locked out in the backyard for a couple hours and i was crying to the stars like mom please come home all i remember is just she was little like maybe she was what five six at the time calls me and she's like mom come home my brother's outside grandma won't <laughs> let him in and she's in tears i remember just because she's eating soup or something on, on in inside the window i was like like knocking on the thing like please unlock the door unlock the door and she couldn't because my grandma was a little crazy at the time but oh my gosh good on her and listen um yeah i mean so you know mom party. we know yeah, you party mom never drunk, so she's not i never she's, got drunk okay. you guys mom, she's got a beer on the side of her right now we're drinking brews the question. the question was is it weird that your little babies are grown up or get, is it cool that like you get to drink with your yes kids? Well, before pre-COVID, it was amazing. Designated drivers, you know. <laughs> but because uh, Jake was always a designated but, driver. No, he was we're talking about like being in France, being com- no, all of us I th- completely wasted together. I think you know? I, we weren't like completely. No, wasted. there's a video of a mom on my shoulders <laughs> us falling in France. Because I we think were so I think it's cool. I think, you know, I'm a young mom and we kind of all kind of grew up together in a way. I mean, obviously I'm your mom, but we're just really close. We have that friend mom relationship. You guys know when, you know, to, you know, the respect for mom, but also we, we get to have fun. I remember in France, we were out there at some club and we were dancing away and some girl kissed me. Do you remember that? I don't remember that. (laughs) Do you know? I remember I like, you, it was so packed. We were all drunk. Some girl walks up to me and kisses me, and Jake like looks at me and like 
he's probably thinking like, is she going to join in? Or <laughs> what's she going to do? You know? What the heck? I didn't, like, was oh I? my God. I don't know, Brendan. That it was, crazy. yeah, it was fun. I enjoy you guys and I'm, you know, it's, it's awesome. We get to have fun and still, you know, work hard, play hard. What advice would you give to maybe some young parents out there that are like, cause I always get comments on my YouTube videos that are like, your mom is so cool. Like, I, I wish I could be as cool as your, your mom one day or, you know, or I wish my mom could be that cool. Or I wish I could be that cool to my kids. What kind of advice would you give to those people that, you know, aspire to have a relationship like you do with your kids? How would you like tell them to have that relationship? I don't know. I think parenting is really, really difficult. And I, I wished I would have done it with like, you need two parents like it's it's you do I don't know if you need well I mean I kind of missed having that not not with the person that I had but just the idea of having like a mom dad in the house and the, that figure you know you need but some some people really need a father figure and I feel like maybe that's why you guys were so chaotic because you didn't have direction and at parenting as you guys will know someday especially for your first, you're learning. You don't know. There's really not a, a handbook of how your kids are going to turn out. Everybody's different. Everybody personality's different. So I don't know. I don't know if I want to give advice to that. I just did the best. I wasn't perfect. I'm not perfect. I did the best that I could under the circumstances that I was put into. And um, I mean, that's all I could say. I, you know, I, I wanted it to be your friend so you guys can talk to me and feel at ease. And those times when you guys get into a situation because everybody does you know I wanted to be open and to hear you guys be for you guys to feel safe like to talk to me about those things and not be scared or not tell me because I didn't have that relationship with my parents n at all whatsoever so I remember like when you guys were young and going to school and I was like constantly prying you guys about certain things because I wanted you, you guys to know it was safe to talk to me um, did we talk to you back then? You kind of did. I mean, I feel like... I feel like we talked to you more now than... Yeah, I think you talked to me more now. I mean, Jake, I feel like, was a little difficult. Sometimes you guys would be like, okay, mom, okay, mom, okay, you know? So I wasn't sure, and I would, like, just say things over and over and over again about drugs, you know, or certain, when it got to a certain point, you know, condoms and, you know, sex and all that stuff. Talk to you about that? Because you didn't talk to me about that ever. I did, too. I never got the birds and bees talk. I just learned it myself. No, I did talk. I did. I talked to all of you guys. Not me. I was <laughs> <laughs> so it's hard. I don't feel like there's uh, there's not a, a right way or wrong way. It's what works for your family and your children and your environment and situation. It was just me. So, you know. And people might think that we had like this this other like great environment and stuff but there was times where we had an ebt card and we were you know we were on the food stamps and we were doing yeah. that lifestyle yeah i remember it. it it was pretty bad i remember my friend andrea um she used to live by by us and we would go for walks in the morning and i remember going for a walk and kind of like being in tears almost like being like i don't i, I might even get emotional just thinking back wow and just saying like i, I don't i don't even have toilet paper and it's like, I don't know how I'm going to get until Friday or whatever day it was. And she literally went home and brought me like a big old thing from Costco of toilet paper. And then I have my friend Karen, my best friend Karen. Oh, she gave you like $500. She gave me, no, that was Kathy. Oh. Yeah, it's another friend. Okay. She was amazing and it gave, it wrote a check for $500. And my friend Karen, I remember you guys were taking acting classes with her, with her daughter and I was telling her, you know, my story a little bit, and she gave me fifty dollars. You know, just little things like that that it it, it totally helped, and um, yeah, it was a little bit short period of our of our, you know, if you guys growing up of our life, but so glad we're not there anymore do you own or rent your home sure you do and i bet it can be hard work you know what's easy bundling policies with geico geico makes it easy to bundle your homeowners or renters insurance along with your auto policy and it's a good thing too because you already have so much to do around the house go to geico.com get a quote and see how much you could save it's geico easy visit geico.com today that's geico.com yeah so like look and uh, you know we did have we did have a little bit of a rough you know rough childhood. I don't want people to think that we're, we've always been privileged or anything like that because it was never like that for us. And people might think about that now because we I mean we're pretty much like like we're on the more privileged side now. So I feel like people might 
think that of us and be like, oh, you guys are just suburban kids. But like we were suburban kids, but we were like fake suburban kids, you know, in a way. Like we, I, I went to private school and then I got pulled out. You got, I couldn't even go to private school. Yeah, you at least got to experience that. You got to wear a uniform. I mean, I went to sec- second grade, so how much no. <laughs> yeah. I had pizza head there, and I was like, <laughs> yeah, I wow. Well, that was the goal. Like, you know, what, what I, I was like, okay, they're going to go to private school, blah, blah, blah. That was like our, my parenting, you know, thing that I was hoping for you guys. And then with the divorce, it didn't work out that way. But, you know, you guys, you guys came out all right. It um, came out all right. I know we usually hit, like, what's your scariest experience, but this one's going to be a little bit different. What was your scariest, like, experience while being a single mom raising your kids, like, in that general direction? Before, we, I know you have other stories, too, and we'll share those, but, like, what, in that direction, since we're in that topic, yeah. like, what's the scariest thing, being a parent? Um, Besides, obviously, like, your kid getting hit by a car or something. Yeah. I mean, I have... I have a lot of really good scares, um, and I yeah maybe if the, if you guys will have me on again, we can uh, talk uh, about those other ones. Let us know in the comments. Do you guys <laughs> want her on again? We'll get some more stories. I mean, it might be interesting. Yeah, but um, I would say during that time period, those good I want to say good ten years of really roughness, and you guys are, you know, five to fifteen basically, and or two to, well, Jessica was two, so 10 years, 12. Um, everything was scary. Everything was scary. Everything was, was so new. Um, I had, a, I, you know, before my divorce, I had my own business, really didn't, just, it was just a little business that I had, but I was able to bring you guys to work with me. It was so easy. With the divorce, I had to find a full-time job. So that was like completely scary. Not that I was uneducated and couldn't do it. I, I knew I could do all that, but I was kind of like, you guys were, I was trying to get you guys into acting. I'm an actress and I had my agent. So I always wanted the flexibility, you know, so my business had the flexibility. I could bring my kids to work. If I had an audition or you guys had an audition, it was easy. You guys were booking a lot of um, commercials, a lot of print work at the time. So it was, it was fantastic. We had to put all of that to a stop, to a halt once I had to work full time because no one was there to take you guys on those things. So that was really scary. It was scary, like letting you guys you know, out of my reach and not being, you know, watching you guys having YMCA. I never thought that I'd have to leave you guys like that to take care of you. If you don't know what YMCA is, it's an after school program where you basically they stay open until like 7 p.m. when you get out of school. Yeah. We were always the last one. Yeah, I because I worked about almost an hour away from their school. So I was like rushing to get home and pick them up or not home, but pick them up first. But um, at that time, I was also going through a really, really nasty, and I'm talking nasty divorce. And I was, I mean, it lasted until the youngest, Jessica, was 18 years old. So just five years ago. So it was really, really bad. And I remember I was in the middle of trial. We were trying to figure out who's going to get what. And I, you know, I wanted to keep the house. And he was like, no, sell it. And you know, get an apartment. It was just, it was, it was hor- horrific, but I was under a lot of stress. I was dealing with a lot of, a lot of just crap. And one night I came home six o'clock, picked you guys up from the YMCA, came home to make dinner. I remember I was making spaghetti. I think I love your, your, your peschetti, like My you call it the best spaghetti ever. I used to call it peschetti. Yeah. So I was there cooking. I mean, I think I was still wearing my clothes from work. You guys were running around doing whatever. And I just didn't feel good. I had this weird like pain that kept hitting hitting my head, and I remember it started prior, a couple of days prior, and and I was like, what's going on? It was like every four or five hours I'd get this like sharp pain to my head, and I was like, okay, whatever. I took it Tylenol all day long, was fine, and then but by the time I was cooking, it was getting really bad to the point where I kind of started crying. So I went into my bedroom, because you guys were all in the kitchen. I went to my bedroom, started crying, called my mom. And I'm like, Mom, I don't feel good. I, I want to go to urgent care. Can you come over and you know, watch the kids? She's like, I'll be there in 15 minutes. I'm like, OK. So sh- I waited. I went to urgent care. I got there around 9.30. And my blood pressure was, that was when I was diagnosed with high blood pressure. But um, my blood pressure was extremely high. And I, they sat me down, tried to settle me down. And I was telling them about my pain. I got a CAT scan. I got all this stuff, rushed me in 
doing all these x-rays and stuff to find out because I thought maybe I was going to have an aneurysm. And I'm sitting there freaking out because I'm the only one there. My three little kids are at home. And all I could think of is, I'm going to freaking die. I'm going to die, and who's going to take care of my kids? Their father is a deadbeat, an a-hole, and they're going to go to him, and they're going to be doomed, you know? That's what I'm thinking. Like, my sister and my mom can't just take you guys, you know, who I would want to take you at that time. So I remember just freaking out. My blood pressure was extremely high. They admitted me into the emergency because I was in urgent care. Admitted me to emergency, and still they can't. They couldn't get it down. I had a spinal tap because they wanted to make sure the fluid. I I don't even remember now. It was so long ago. Um, but yeah. So I had. Ex- they finally were able to get it down. Everything was normal. My head, all that. But. Um, I have high blood pressure, and they think it was stress-related due to the situation at the time. I was under extreme stress and pressure, and I think that was the scariest time of my life, though, because I felt like, please, if I'm going to die, like, wait till my kids are 18 and they can take care of themselves. I, not now when they're five and seven and nine. I was it, was, it was the most freakiest, scariest thing. Damn. I, I think that, that's yeah. pretty, so do you, is, does high blood pressure run in the family? Um, yeah, you know, it, it kind of does. Yeah. It kind of does, so. Which we do, but look, this, no is, a stress. Good, this is a good <clears throat> moment to is explain that, like, you know, they say stress is a silent killer, Yeah. and that everyone should, you know, take moments of, uh, that's why I do a lot of meditation, a lot of, like, calming yeah uh things just to calm me down and keep me cool but wow that that is pretty crazy mom i know i know we've uh, like kind of touched upon this and told us before but you know hearing it from you on here is really you know yeah i appreciate mean i don't think i've ever us. thank you i don't think i've ever told you all the details um and by the way my blood pressure is good now you she's know she's healthy yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's, she's not it, gonna die it's good god no not now maybe in another 50 years yeah, yeah. All right, well, on a lighter note, let's change the subject up a little bit. All right, so I got a random memory thought that I want to bring back to both Go ahead. Remember when we were cooking barbecue outside and the damn barbecue blew up? <laughs> oh, my God, Wait, yeah. I, that just sparked a couple more memories. <laughs> There was a rat inside of our barbecue. Well, we don't know how long this rat was in there, but it was like deep fried. So we must have cooked many burgers on top of this rat. Well, that was a different barbecue, though. There was the one barbecue that blew up on me almost. Yeah. And then the rat barbecue. Wow. That made me go vegan. Or I'm he, sorry, he vegetarian. Go, made me go vegetarian for, for what, a week? For, no, about three months, I swear. Because oh, wow. I was like, I do not want to eat any meat. Yeah. I also remember this one time, my mom, you know, she's, she's, she's a woman of many traits. You know, she, she was doing everything when we were younger. Uh, I remember hearing a scream in the backyard and I guess my mom was cleaning out the pool gutter and I guess there was like frog guts or something. Cause we, at a certain point of the year, every year we would get frogs that would come into our pool and they would just be there all the time. And one time, I guess it got sucked into the vacuum of the pool or something. And I just remember hearing bloody screams. <laughs> yes, I am a woman of all traits. Let me tell you. <laughs> yes, I uh, was cleaning the pool. And I just remember, you know, watching the pool guy when we had one. He would clean out that little filter thing mm-hmm. that you put. So I remember just going in there, cleaning it up. And I, like, pull it up. And it's, like the most disgusting thing it was all like and i just like went ah! <laughs> like it was it just i could sounded not like that. and i'm screaming and jumping up and oh my god you guys came running out like what's wrong what's wrong and like oh it was how do you even know it was the frog guts though like was the frog still attached yeah i could see frog legs like oh, hanging and it was just the guts and yeah, we, we've eaten yeah, it. Yeah, no. Uh, well, mom, where where is where do you want to go next? Where's one place you want to go next? Because I I usually try to give give a family trip. You know, obviously during COVID we can't go anywhere. But like we went to Ireland last year, maybe year before, went to Italy, yeah. went to France. Where do you want to go next? Because all these trips are determined on where you want to go. So, you know, there's a couple places I want to go. I want to go uh, to Greece. Mm, that's very romantic, though. Yes, I definitely want to go to South Africa. I still want to go to Spain. Mm. We miss Spain. We we went kind of around it. Um, 
gosh, where else? And then I don't remember where else. What are the other places I want to go? I want to go to Israel. I want to go to I wanna Jerusalem. Go to, yeah, that's in Israel, uh, Brennan. <laughs> to go where like Jesus was, you know, that'd be dope. There's so many places. I know you you've been Australia a lot of times. Yeah, I haven't. I want to go to New Zealand. I want to go to Iceland. Oh, Greenland. Greenland. Well, Greenland is icy and Iceland is green. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. They did that to uh, deter tourists. Pretty yeah. crazy stuff. And I want to know um, one one of your other scares, like because I know you have some paranormal scares, and you've, oh my goodness. you've always kind of like told me a little bit about them. So you know what? Tell us. I have like so many. Though. Just give us one which of them. ones, and then maybe we'll have her on again for the next podcast, ah. so you guys can hear more. Because my mom's got stories to tell. I mean, should I tell you like the very first, the very the last, or is it like somewhere in the middle? Somewhere in the middle, you know. So it's not your best one and not your worst one, but like somewhere in the middle. Okay, let me tell you once. Okay. This will kind of go hand in hand with what we were talking about a little bit, okay. which I don't think I ever told you guys this. So this is actually good. It's time for her to <laughs> share her scare. Yeah. Um, so th- during that time of divorce and everything that I, we just uh, spent some time talking about, right in the beginning, my sperm donor remarried right away, uh, basically had an affair and uh, with the woman and married her. But I remember always thinking, like, she, because I, it, it's a, it's a, this would be another, like, two hours, but I kind of knew this was all going to happen. I knew the the woman, everything else. Later on, I'll tell you the whole story. But I kept having these weird feelings that this woman was, like, a witch, okay? I don't know why, but I just thought she was a witch, and she wants to cause some harm to me. And... During all of this, when this was all happening, court, everything, I would go to bed, and it happened for about three or four nights where I would wake up, and I would have that, like, lucid dreaming that you that you talk about all the time, where I was dreaming of people coming into the home, my house, and I could see myself sleeping, and... Uh, sleep paralysis. Uh, yes, okay, sleep paralysis, and I couldn't get up and wake up, but what happened two days in a, in a row were... I saw this black smoke coming from the hallway into my bedroom. I don't know if I was awake or if I was dreaming it because I feel like I was awake. It was that real. And it just was coming in, blowing in. And it was like a, like a, this dark darkness trying to attack me. And I remember in my sleep or awake, I don't remember, just saying, you know, get away. I'm stronger than you. Get away. I'm not going to let you in. I'm not going to let you in. Saying my prayers. But just really like being really, really strong and saying, get out of here. You're not going to come in. You're not going to overtake my body or anything. And then I remember just waking up finally and just, just saging the whole house. I had a little, um, stuff from, what is this? The holy water. Yeah. That came from Italy that a friend had given me. And I finally got rid of it, but I was having the same dream and the same smoke coming into my room for about three, three nights straight. And it was, it was really, really scary because I couldn't wake up and I knew it was dark and I felt like it was her. Mm. Like she had sent this. Yes. You know, like we might be having someone else on the podcast one day that he talks about a situation where like he's a satanic priest and he would like lucid dream and do stuff like that to people wow as like a, a curse and like lucifer would make him do this stuff. yeah well it was like it was a black smoke but you could tell it was like 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 harry potter you know how they have like that you could see them flying mm-hmm. it was like flying towards what me what are those guys called i can't think I, yeah I, i'm uh, i don't know what it's called but yeah that's crazy that's what i would feel and it wouldn't go away and i remember just please get out of here please get out of here i'm not letting you and i'm stronger than you stronger than you i can't remember repeating it repeating it repeating it and then god 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 help me say my saying my prayers and finally would wake up but it felt like it was a good 10 minutes of me like fighting it off wow. that's crazy yeah. and and i've you know every time i talk to someone who has those sleep paralysis type dreams you know that black smoke is a reoccurring topic that comes in and it's scary i'm grateful that i don't have those dreams knock on wood because i'm not trying to ever have one of those but wow yeah i've had weird dreams since i was a little girl which save for another podcast yeah listen guys um, let us know do you want the mom (laughs) back dreams 
but this this dream like all my other dreams were like almost like good dreams uh, this one was like really really evil it was like yeah. someone had done a spell wow. or was trying to get a spell into me wow well yeah. Look, that's not going to happen anymore because I'm going to bless you with some good positivity Please, vibes. Please, thank you. You only have that good energy. Ah, wow. feels good. <laughs> Look, you know, guys, we could talk for hours and hours on end because, you know, this is our mom and we could do it. Let us know. Do you want another one like this? Because Jake and I would love to have another conversation with our mom. I know we got to kind of end this one short. Holidays are around the corner, so we just want to wish everyone listening a very, very happy holiday season. Whether you celebrate Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Christmas, whatever holidays else are out there, have a happy holiday season. Uh, do you guys want to say anything? Yeah, just um, from our family, from the Taylors, happy holidays, happy new year. Yes, we will talk to you again before the new year, but happy new year, happy holidays. We love you guys. Thank you so much for streaming the podcast. If you didn't know, I have a new song out called Girl Next Door. Go stream that. It is fire as my mom would say it is a banger it um, is it is the bomb is the another bomb. one Ooh, look at her <laughs> she's going out to check out the song it's available anywhere where you can stream music uh check out our instagrams lisa d taylor jake taylor brennan check us out give us a follow and follow the share your scare podcast uh instagram to share your scare and until next week I think that wraps it up for the Sus Podcast. Thanks for coming on. Thank Mom. you for having me, guys. I'm so proud of you both. Of course. We love you so much. Thank you. Love Thank you, you too. Thank you for everything you do for us. And uh, let's drink some more beers after this, all right? <laughs> yes. All right, guys. We'll talk to you guys next week. Peace. Bye. Thanks for listening to Sus. Share your scare. Make sure to subscribe and check back every Wednesday for new episodes. And don't forget to tell your friends. Follow all of our social media links at shareyourscare.com. We're going to be doing tons of giveaways, but only for our most active fans. If you have a scare of your own that you want to share, leave us a voicemail. Our number is 626-275-8695. Or if you just want to shoot us an email, our email is shareyourscarepod at gmail.com. And that's spelled with a U-R. Until next Wednesday, stay sus. <laughs>